inside of Citrix, is, uh, as he's been called. So, um, so Chris, I have to ask you. So, um, you know, we, we hear a lot of talk about bring your own. Right. So, if I have this, like, my, my own Nirvana helmet, can I bring uh -oh. that? And does that work? <laughs> uh, yeah, talk about, you know, tell the people what I'm talking about. I guess you've been Googling. <laughs> yeah, I saw <laughs> the Nirvana helmet. This is a so very cool device. It's got virtually everything you would ever want on it. Right, and you certainly can bring your own, I presume, to the right. party. You'd be the life of the party if you brought that. Yeah, helmet. so that that's a, a bit of an exaggeration, uh, yeah. but but the concept uh, actu is actually something we've been talking about for a long time, uh, that that evolves around uh, taking a, a device like a, a smartphone and uh, getting to the point where that's all you need. Uh, you can plug it into a large display, use a full-size keyboard and mouse, and uh, basically run everything off a, in a hosted environment. And uh, you know the the really cool thing is that you know we've been talking about it for years and years, and conceptually it always kind of made sense, but the technology wasn't really ready, the devices weren't really good enough, and uh, you know this year I think you know we've cleared that hurdle. Uh, earlier in the year, uh, Motorola came out with a device called the Atrix, and uh, I don't know if you've seen that or not. It was demoed on uh, on stage yesterday, yeah. uh, and literally you can plug it in to a full size high res keyboard. Uh, display mouse and uh, run a virtual desktop and and it just works so we're, we're there this year is is definitely the year this, of, is, uh, this is the year of Citrix and and virtualization I mean for mainstream mm -hmm. I mean Citrix has been playing in this area obviously on the open source side and on the desktop side with all your products but take us through the Citrix uh, I don't want to say aha moment because you've been kind of doing a lot of you know desktop in innovation for a decade right um, right or two but you know i'll see the ipad comes out and, and we've been following your blog and and your blogs in general the huge community not all of them but i mean for the most part but you saw um, activity around hacking the ipad and the iphone so right. take us through those early days where kind of receiver <coughs> clicks in we go wow this is a gold mine right this is a game changer shift and we saw a lot of shifting with citrix right kind of moving the troops like we have a winner it's right. not about VMware Citrix, but it's a whole nother game. Take us through that sure. moment, and what and when was that? Um, well, so you know, it's interesting. You talk about following the blogs as, as an example. One one of the things that we did different uh, when we uh, back when the iPhone came out, uh, when you you consider like the traditional product roadmap kind of scenarios, you talk to your big customers, you build a roadmap, you kind of turn the crank on you know what you plan to do, um, and if if we were to Look, and then you talk to analysts, and you know what are they projecting, and what do they tell you about their cu your customers or, or your market size? And um, it, at back at the time when when the iPhone came out, if we had only listened to the analysts and our, our big customers, what they would have said is that you know it's BlackBerry. You know, like don't don't spend your resources <laughs> on the iPhone. If you listen to other analysts, some right. analysts might have said that. Not Chris. Dave Vellante, yeah. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> you know, so not everybody, but, but <laughs> you know, early on. Yeah, you Blackberry, know, Blackberry. And yeah. especially if you look at our customer base, you know, it's like they're the big co yeah. companies and they're concerned about security and they're concerned about locking things down and so forth. Yeah. Um, and, and what we did was simply like, put it out in a blog post to say, hey, would you want this? <laughs> and we just kind of interested, no, <laughs> you know, <laughs> are, you, are you interested? And oh yeah, so that, that one post generated something like 800,000 views and hundreds and hundreds of, yeah. of comments where people were describing like how they want it, why they want it, how they're gonna use it. And uh, it, it worked wonders in terms of short circuiting the whole you know, business case of like, okay, this means this. Do the research, call some guy up who's like six months <coughs> behind the times, you know, okay, market share. Kind of, because the research firms, Dave and I talk about this all the time because he runs one of the most progressive research firms that's really real time and open source. They're all looking in the rear view mirror, right? Like, okay, so if you, if you take that example, everyone tells you BlackBerry. Yep. You put out a blog post, like similar to Chuck Hollis at <coughs> EMC, his most popular post he told us at EMC World was the post he wrote about how the iPad has become a toy for his kids. <laughs> it, it, of all his posts on thought yep. leadership, it's right. like that post yeah. generated the most action. That was about you know, that was a year ago, right? right? But what does that tell you about market intelligence? I mean, you getting crowdsourced, open source right. market intelligence. Yep. I mean, that's classic, and that changed right. Things. And it changed things. And and one of the things it did is um, it it also changed who was talking to us because traditionally. Uh, we talk to the IT guys, uh, like the guys that are here, you know, uh, for the most part, the, the people that are giving us input are uh, the, the 
you know, it might be the admins, it might be the IT directors, it might be the CIO, but it's all IT guys. And what, what happened uh, with the iPhone that changed things is users were starting to talk to us more and directly and sometimes skipping the IT guys. And uh, in fact, even going back to the same post where we got, you know, probably half of the hundreds of comments were from end users. And they were from like, I'm a doctor, and I need this, and I need it tomorrow. And you know, I could see more patients. I could be more effective. I could have better outcomes. I mean, and then the next person would say, you know, wait a minute, I'm a lawyer, and I want every contract that I ever wrote, and I want to be able to have it with me whenever I want it. You know, that, that's really kind of so goes down, you know, right so down. So John, the I have line. to, I have to say, so you're talking about, you know, real time research, and you know, I, I just got to put in a plug. So we have a wiki. Yep. We use a media wiki, so you can go back and look at the history. So I went back and looked at our original iPhone analysis, which was June 2008, I guess. Okay. Right? And, um, and basically, the title of the article was Apple's Brilliant Strategy or Why the iPhone Will Take Over the Known Universe. Okay, so, all right, there That's you go. That's pretty yeah. prolific. And, and, Notre and, Dame and, as well. And, and, there, there you go. Pretty <laughs> obvious. <laughs> you know, and like, hello. Okay. Well, it wasn't then, so but, obvious but back we, then. But it wasn't uh, back no, then, yeah. to the point. And then we write us. to an IT audience, and we told that audience, as a legion of iPod owners upgrade to the iPhone and iPod Touch, Apple's going to create the first true mass market network handheld uh, uh, users, and IT departments are going to have to accommodate them. Right. Here at the end. I mean, it was oh. so blatantly obvious from the people we talked to. You know what it was is CEOs in our community said, I'm getting one. Yep. And I don't <laughs> care if they don't support it. They're supporting <laughs> it. And that was the real-time intelligence. It's so that, disruptive, yeah. too, because it, like, it breaks every single known IT process and rule. Yep. Right? It's, like, it's so amazing how mm -hmm. that one product becomes a flashpoint. Right. I mean, the iPhone in particular, but now the iPad just is more jewelry for the tech jewelry crowd. Right. I mean, it was originally tech jewelry, cool, hip, but yep. now it's relevant. And is that and the now. tipping point for, for so, virtual desktop? So, well, I think it, it's a tipping point, but it... It's just the tip, you know, I just... The tip uh, of the tipping point. Yeah, exactly, because <laughs> I just had through a session uh, with in the GeekSpeak Live uh, just you know, two hours ago and had, had a room full of folks and asked the question, okay, how many here support a bring your own program? And, you know, there were 100 plus there, and, and I think there were like four hands that went up. How many of you have <laughs> support BlackBerry? <coughs> Everybody's hands went up. And yeah. I'm like, and they're wow. All, they're frowning. And this, and this is Citrix, and, and these are the Geek Speak guys. And I'm wow. thinking, wow, yeah. this it's, is interesting. It's, a, it's, so it's, it's, so it's really just the tip. There's a lot more. So take us through. So, so first yeah, of all, the through. social media case study for the folks out there who are un not understanding what social media is about, what Chris is describing with that post, to me, is what we believe in and we say in terms of social media is the key to success, and that is not trying to force social media. You actually just talk to the audience, go direct. Yep. Get real-time information. Get real data. Right. Apply that data to business value. Hence, a strategy change. Right. Right. And I'm sure you guys didn't move mountains, but from from what I understand, you take me through this. So you go, oh wow, we have we hit a nerve. We hit yep. a rip current. Right. This is new data. Right. New data comes in. The company's not going to just make sweeping changes. There was some hacking going on, right? So take us through the hacking that went on from there. So what happened yeah, so next? You, you, must, you must have heard some of the inside stories, I guess, huh? No, I've been following <laughs> you guys for, I've been following as, an, as a blogger and an analyst for you guys for years. Okay. Going back to uh, the, the early days yeah. and when you well, acquired Zen. Yeah, so, so, you know, one of the things that is more effective, again, well, having customer feedback is great, mm -hmm. you know, and, and having people ask for things is great. Uh, but what, what really makes a difference as well is having a prototype, having something that works. Because, uh, you know, you can PowerPoint things to death, but if you can, you know, put it in your hand and say, wow, this works, and this works better than I thought, yeah. uh, you know, that really changes things. In fact, that's one of the things we did internally yeah. was, yeah. Uh, you know, we were able to, to get some, some unofficial resources, like where we didn't. <laughs> skunk we, works. Is skunk <laughs> works, exactly. So, uh, yeah. so, so we had uh, some, some really ambitious folks. Uh, one of them you saw on stage yesterday, uh, Gus Pinto, uh, you know, where it was like, hey, I'm going to go we're learn doing this for Objective fun. C. For fun. And, yeah. I mean, he just taught himself Objective C and went out and, and took the initiative to, to make it happen. And, you know, then, then we had some other uh, groups within engineering that, that also provided the, the ICA stack. And, and the components to you know put put together a good pr prototype and uh, quite frankly you know you, you you get a good prototype together you start showing it around you show it to someone like Mark Templeton and boom you budget know. <laughs> hello <laughs> exactly. hello budget uh -huh. yeah, well, you know well they, they, you don't have to worry about the budget yeah. so much yeah, it's yeah. like <laughs> you know all right hey you know we got to do something yeah, about yeah. this yeah and, 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 and that happens and well, then when did you pump it in the app store so obviously when you put it into the iTunes. 
App Store. App Store, yeah. You, you get instant feedback, right? So go back <laughs> to your original kind of you know, changing strategy post with that, you get the data. But now you right. cannot deny the real-time analytics of right. how many downloads you get. Oh yeah, right. right. So you There's go, real, okay. Real time, you know, and, and we hit number one in the uh, free business app, uh, you know, as soon as we, we so with the iPad uh, receiver, that came out first day. Uh, and you know, so we're not allowed to talk about it, but obviously we had some <laughs> some help from uh, not just ourselves to be re ready for that first yeah, day. Yeah. Um, and you know, we we made it to the top of the list. And since then, you know, we're always you know two, three, four, five, yeah. whatever. We're phenomenal we're success. Um, now, you know, y you do get some critical comments there, and and one of the things that we find is. Um, you know, either it works or it doesn't work. So we've got like this big dichotomy of we got like a whole bunch of five stars, this is awesome. And then a handful, not just a handful, we have some one stars too where uh, depending on how your, your Citrix environment is configured, it may work with no work or it may take IT to do something. And if, you know, users are really impatient as you know, as we yeah, all are, yeah, right? Yeah. And if it doesn't work, you know, right away, it's like, this sucks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm At least it it's one. free, you know. <laughs> exactly. Well, but see, we were talking to an earlier guest <coughs> about the sort of, you know, philosophy of the way in which IT organizations um, deploy Citrix. Right. It's not dogmatic like it is, you know, <coughs> say in a VMware environment. It's got to be done this <laughs> way. Right. Right. There's a lot more flexibility, and that's <coughs> a two-edged sword, isn't it? Well, that's true. Yeah, the, the fact that we have lots of uh, security scenarios in terms of different uh, type of gateways and, and uh, different uh, authentication kind of scenarios that, that gives customers flexibility for how they want to manage their business. What that does does do is it causes situations where, you know, somebody buying a you know downloading the, the the app out of the out of the marketplace or you know for Android or, or the iPhone whichever it may just it may not work out of the box unless you know IT set something up. Uh, per, per, you know, some instructions. That but that's provide. not by accident, right? I mean, that's a conscious decision on your part to allow that type of flexibility, well, isn't it? Well, I think it evolved. Yeah, you know, okay, it was more organic. We've been 20 years yeah. doing this, and we've got lots of customers yeah. with varying requirements, you know, from really tight lockdown security, like we talked about this morning, you know, with mm -hmm. the, you know, Defense Department yes. back in through, you know, the good enough security scenario. Uh, so to, to accommodate that, you know, we've had to, you know, allow different types of authentication and different types of. of Chris, we know we got tight. In. You got a tight schedule, and uh, want to just kind of jump into some couple final questions here. Um, because we can talk about social media all day long, <coughs> but I mean, yep. just we live and breathe that. It's what we do for our our, our platforms. But uh, let's talk about Citrix. I mean, you're involved in the roadmap. You do talk about roadmap. You engage the research to tell you market share numbers. But right now, you guys put out a pretty compelling story here at Citrix Synergy. You know, you got the personal cloud on one end, right. which is the user, yep. and then you got the public cloud, right. and then you're kind of sandwiching this private cloud, which really <laughs> people are saying is not a lot of meat on the bone. Right, which is okay. It's emerging and yeah, different right. different data centers. So you've got a nice little enabled open strategy there. Right, um, and then you got Netscaler underneath it. Very compelling. I think F five has got to be. I think shaking in their boots. If I'm F five, I don't. Right. I got to be scratching my head, going. Mm -hmm. Citrus has exactly. got pole position. So right. you guys are poised for success. Um, right. And you get the kind of the triple threat there going on. What do you need to do to be successful? Uh, some have been saying storage has been kind of an issue. We talked with Ziotech and V3 Systems. Right. Your partners like that seem to be coming in. Right. I mean, everything from cloud, when it gets down to, oh, yeah, I'm all you know, smoking the peace pipe of greatness, right. apps, et cetera. You yeah. got you know, the, you got to get to the, to the nuggets, and that's compute, network, and storage. Right. How do, what do you guys need to do to be successful to execute that vision? And then how do you deal with all this underlying, I don't want to say legacy, but you know, core infrastructure? Right. Well, you know, there's no single answer, no silver bullet, wish, wish there was, but certainly, uh, you know, from an ecosystem standpoint, we've got to em embrace and, 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 and collaborate with the, the big players out there. So, you know, the Cisco's and HP's and, uh, and the storage guys that, you know, own some of these environments. Obviously, we have to do a good job, uh, you know, collaborating with them and coming up with solutions that work for customers. Uh, when you look strategically or, or longer term, uh, what, what's certainly in our favor and what, what Simon talked about this morning is like, okay, this, this private cloud is sort of like this interim step. Okay, you did virtualization, now you want to potentially do this private cloud thing, but the real economics gain are, you know, and cloud econ economics translates to when you, you know, can utilize a, a public cloud and be able to bridge to it and, and you know, create this hybrid environment. Uh, and we think that, you know, strategically that's in our favor and certainly from a market share standpoint, you know, 
okay, we're not there from a virtualization in the enterprise standpoint, but from the virtualization platform in the public cloud, you know, we're there. You're there <laughs> so, yeah. so, you know, we're like moving into that space uh, in effect, or rather, you know, that, that's still out I there. I mean, great competitive uh, strategy, but I guess maybe I'll drill down a little, hone in on that. What white spaces do you see that's innovative for either partners or entrepreneurs to play in? Because there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there who are in the similar boat that Citrix was in. They're playing sure. around, they're prototyping, and I right. kind of want to know, you know, where can I play without getting rolled on by Citrix? Right. Well, so actually, the, the, in, when it comes to the cloud, there's, there's actually a lot, because first of all, uh, Zen is free and, and open source, so it, you, you can go in there, and, and we're encouraging folks to, you know, build on top of Zen server. Uh, now you've got OpenStack, and, you know, again, an open source initiative that, uh, again, I think is going to enable a lot of white space, uh, a lot of uh, solutions around this hybrid cloud enablement. You know, we're not looking to be the only provider there. We're looking to, you know, be certainly a leader, but we want an ecosystem. We, we want to have, you know, uh, multiple security options. We want to have multiple storage options. We want to be able to, you know, ha have a, uh, a platform that, that can be supported and, you know, creates opportunity for startups that, that can add value around You talk that. about that, that um, hybrid cloud. You know, Templeton yesterday had this, his manifesto, the five points, right. and, he, and he gave reference examples. Yep. And um, Dave Cahill on Wikibon wrote an article about the Zynga hybrid cloud. Right. I mean, I thought that was a pretty good reference example. Yep. You know, oh, it is. And, and a real hybrid cloud. You hear sure. a lot of talk about hybrid cloud. That's yep. real, real hybrid cloud, isn't right. it? Right. No, that's a yeah. great example, and, you know, even with you know, my own team, you know, I, I, don't, I can't remember last time. I used to buy servers every time I had money left over in a budget for every quarter. Just buy servers because I always needed them. You know, no matter what, <laughs> you, you're always buying servers because you got to do a prototype. you got to try things out. Right. And, you know, ever since Certainly the don't spend the money on people who told you BlackBerry was <laughs> relevant. <laughs> well, That's for sure. yeah, so, so now <laughs> it's just a matter of we just try and turn the dial up, yeah. you know, at, at the public clouds. And, you know, it, it, we have no limitation now for building prototypes yeah. and building solutions and showing demos and so forth. So, you know, it's been you know really effective on multiple levels. Chris Fleck here. He's at his uh, Twitter handle is at Chris Fleck. You're active, prolific blogging. You guys have a great social media uh, campaigns. You've always got go good, great mm -hmm. content coming on. We love your knowledge content. We've been following it. We support it. Um, we link to it often. Appreciate you coming on the queue. We'd love to spend more time with you, um, but uh, we got to get to our next guest. But we sure. really appreciate you coming inside the queue. Okay, Thank great. You. Thanks, Thank Chris. You. All okay. right.